Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We are ready for another update. We are doing weeks nine and 10. Let's go. All right, so for those of you who are new, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Welcome, my name is Stephanie. My husband and I are documenting our journey through IVF and just our marriage and I've got my notes and I'm ready to give you all the details. So the first like few weeks, weeks five, six, seven, eight, very minimal symptoms, cravings, nothing like that. However, weeks nine and 10, we're adding in some more things. So <laughs> it's not quite as simple as before. Cravings will start there. I still don't have any cravings. I'm just, I can tell I'm hungry. That's basically it. So and like I said in the last video, I just can tell that I can't go on a like eight o'clock, 12, five or six and eat in just three big meals. I have to go like sporadically throughout the day. So I try and eat just a bunch of little meals now. That's basically it. There's no strong cravings, just, just hungry. <laughs> Okay, so symptoms. Week nine, I had noticed that I started getting waking up in the morning and I just feel like I have all of the things going on in my nose. I just am stopped up, I just all the junk in the morning's first thing. So I noticed one morning though that I, as I was trying to like blow nose and just clear everything out, I had like some blood, which was odd because that's not normal for me. And I was like, huh, it's weird. Just thought it was like just dry in the air or something like that, which is now that I say that out loud is odd for DFW because it's humid as all heck out here. So that was odd. But later that day around like 10, 11, I was in a meeting at work and thankfully my boss was in this meeting with me because I had to send her an IM because I just full blown nosebleed, just had to like hunch over and I was like, well, what in the world? looked that up, apparently that is a very common pregnancy symptom. I have never heard anybody talk about nosebleeds. So just FYI, if you're newly pregnant or you're trying to conceive or anything like that, if you get nosebleeds, don't freak out, it's normal. <laughs> so apparently it has to do with the blood volume and all of that stuff just increasing and you just are more at risk to get nosebleeds. So now I have a box of Kleenexes on my desk at work and just sporadically in my purse now, by my bed, just, just in case, all bases covered. So another thing is that fatigue is definitely setting in. It is something that I can tell. I'll wake up normal, feel fine in the morning, eat lunch, but by like mid afternoon, I could take a nap. I, it, it, it takes everything in my power to not fall asleep. And, and then as soon as we're ready to go to bed, I am out like a light. Like there's just, there's no laying in bed and talking with my husband. Like if I hit the pillow, I'm done. Just all bets are off. <laughs> the bad thing about that too, is that because I'm so sleepy in the afternoon, I'll find myself like getting up and going and trying to find a snack or just something to munch on. That way it's like giving me something to do, which is not necessarily a good thing because I don't necessarily always find the healthy things to snack on. So I need to like figure out something. So if you, if you've been pregnant, if you are dealing with the same thing, how do you, how do you handle that fatigue? Like, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you do if you're tired in the afternoons. Week 10, my wonderful friend, heartburn has set in. So this little guy has been my friend. <laughs> he goes with me everywhere now. Oh, I, that hit hard. The day that it happened, I didn't actually have any Tums handy. And I was like, called my husband. I was like, you have to stop and get Tums on your way home. <laughs> I was like, we don't have any more. And I need some desperately bad. So on week 10, I also noticed a couple of days. It just felt blah, like not bad, not nauseous, not overly good and not like super excited, just kind of eh. And there was one day in particular, nothing sounded good to eat absolutely nothing and i know i need to eat something all i wanted for lunch was soup soup is not something that my husband and i keep in our pantry and so thankfully from snowpocalypse in february of this year we still had one can of soup and i was like oh thank you jesus because that is all that i was able to eat for lunch that day so that weekend i made that good and went and got, went to the store and got lots of soup just in case that happens again. Week 10, I also noticed that I was starting to get really forgetful. I would walk into a room, forget what I was going in there for, just forget what I was doing in general. Uh, 
Friday of that week, I had uh, to go to my OB to do my blood work and stuff. And I was, one, I was already running behind, but I just, I left the dog out. Like we have a big bloodhound as you guys have seen and we always put her up in her kennel. I don't, she had gone and gotten into her kennel and I heard her and in my head, I locked the door. I didn't, I just left the door wide open. So she had free reign to the house all day long. So she had a great day, but man, it was a pain cleaning up afterwards. So week 10, I also did get a bunch of headaches that week. I had like four days in a row had headaches uh, whenever I'd go to sleep, wake up. The first few days were much worse than the last two days, but they were definitely just headaches that were there. My last symptom from week 10, I know my dad watches this channel. I know I have uncles that watch this channel. So maybe you guys just like fast forward, like, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute, just, just go forward just a little bit. There's your warning, okay? All right, just to be nice to them. All right, so my boobs have not been sore. They have not hurt. They have, in, I, I don't think they've grown any, nothing like that. However, my nipples this week, so stinking sensitive and just tender and oh just just bad like if you put your bra on if you put a t-shirt on just just like sensitive hurt so that's something that kicked in this week yay <laughs> so other notes about week 10 so week 10 is whenever we got the all clear to stop our progesterone and oil shots and my estrogen that i was taking and all that stuff which on the one hand, like I mentioned in the last video that I can link up here, yay, because I said, they are a royal pain in the ass, but at the same time, very scary to just stop because throughout this process, that is what's keeping my baby alive and producing what the progesterone levels and the estrogen levels, keeping those elevated enough that my baby can survive and because my body's not ready to take over yet. So man, going into that last shot, I had, I had recorded and I don't know what happened to it. So I can't include that because I don't have it anymore, but I did record and I was just saying like, just talking about my feelings and how scary it is to hope that my body is ready to go and realizes now that, Hey, we've got something in here that we need to support. We need to kick everything up a notch. So that was an emotion, kind of an emotional day on a good hand and just a, a fearful hand as well. So if you have, been through this journey, you know that it's it's just scary. It's good and bad at the same time. So once we stopped the progesterone, that's when I started noticing a lot more of my symptoms. That's when I started noticing the nipple soreness and I started getting the headaches and I started feeling the fatigue. And what's funny about that is normally in the other like people that I follow and watch, they always say that they feel worse when they're doing the progesterone and oil and I felt fine. And then after I stopped, that's when I started noticing everything. So it's very opposite of, of anything else that anybody has ever said. And so I was like, maybe they were, maybe the progesterone was masking my symptoms. I don't know if that's a thing. So I have no idea, but I've noticed a lot more now since I've stopped being on the progesterone and oil shots than I had before. So that's basically it. I know my symptoms are still probably very minimal in comparison and I thankfully I never got the nausea or anything like that. Uh, no, granted there's still time so I'm not saying that I won't but so far I've not had that and I'm thankful, I'm grateful that I've still been healthy and I guess have the energy to be able to work out throughout this first trimester. That was something that I was very concerned about going into it because I wanted to be able to keep that part of it going because that is what keeps me just sane and feeling good about myself is if I can at least just move my body in some way. So that will be coming though. I did get something, something's coming, so be ready. But I am gonna go through workouts with you guys and what I've been doing throughout this first trimester and we'll talk about that in a future video. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you click that little subscribe button. Uh, just know that I am praying for you guys. If you have commented and you know told me your journey and what's going on, I have written your name down so that I can keep you on my prayer list every single day. And I just, I'm so excited to connect with you guys every time. So. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I will talk to you guys next Monday. Have a wonderful week. Take care and God bless.